Hello, everybody. Let me make sure I'm hitting. Yeah, I'll hit the button. Uh, Molly and Kathy here. How Hi. are you doing today, Kathy? I'm good, Molly, and how are you? Well, good. She's killing me. I have been laughing so hard, my stomach hurts. Um, several of y'all have asked for um, a tutorial on how we make the little floss books. Yes. Kathy's holding hers up. This is one I'd made before. And so we did a video. How many takes do you think we did? Many. Many, <laughs> many takes. Parts, pieces. It just... Yeah. But we had fun. But we did. We did. <laughs> so we're going to try today to do a more concise one and, you know, right. present right. it to you much better. Hopefully yeah. we've got the camera angle better. I do apologize for looking off. I haven't figured out how to move my monitor yet. It's, uh, it's construction. Yeah, we're coming. It's coming, coming. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be much better today on the not pounding on the table, making noise and all. Yeah. So to get started with, these are the floss <clears throat> books that yes. we're talking about. And this was the one I had mentioned that they hold about 25 skeins of sand. Mm -hmm. uh, skeins of sand. Skeins, skeins of, of floss. floss. <laughs> this is uh, 26 skeins of floss and four empty envelopes because I pulled out some greens. So that's how thick they'll be with about 30. That's a nice size. With about 30 25 skeins. 25 to 30, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and then what mine, I, I use the floss away bags, which we will talk about as we get into the, the uh, requirements with, as far as what you need. Um, the Flossway bag size-wise is a little bit different than what Molly's using. These are uh, quite a bit smaller, actually. Yes. Uh -huh. But uh, if you have those handy or if you have access to those, um, we have found that bags seem to be a little bit of uh, inconsistent in sizes and where you can get them at. Local Needle Workshop usually always carry these, and we have found that Walmart, the big box stores, will have some of the bigger bags and, of course, the online shopping. Um, but for Lost Books, we've had a lot of uh, requests for them, a and tutorial. And this darn one is that. the one Kathy actually made yes. in the uh, first video that yep. we did. I made this one in the first video that we did. And, uh, yep. it, you know, I'm always going to be plainer. Kathy is the queen of embellishments there. Oh, but uh, like embellish. anyway, I got my That's Texas cowgirl on there. And all. Yeah. So anyway, so I'm going to go over a list of what <clears> we need to make these. Yep. And... Uh, Hopefully you have all this stuff already in your house or something very close to it. We're going to start off with the first thing that you need is the plastic bags because that determines the size of everything. Board. Kathy talked to you about the floss away bags. And yep. then I'm going to show you these are ones we bought at uh, Walmart, which I found to be cheap and the cheapest of where I was shopping. And these are, I think they say four by six. Yeah, four by six inches. But remember, they're actually a little longer than six inches because the Ziploc part or the zippy part at the top takes up an extra about half inch or so. Mm -hmm. So my books end up being four and an eighth inch or four and a fourth inches wide by seven inches tall because I'm accommodating. I leave a little room around the edge all the way around so that right. the plastic bags are protected by the uh, chipboard all the way around. Right. And then Kathy used the mine floss are, away bags. I use the floss away bags and mine are really just mirror that only the size is just a little bit smaller. They're three by five, right. which actually they're about three and a half by five. I suppose I should hold that. There <coughs> so go. first thing, get your, you know, have get your, your plastic bags. bags. Yep. Okay. So you know what size chipboard you need to cut. Okay. So. Speaking of chipboard, I use, you can see this is two different kinds of chipboards. Anywhere I find chipboard, I grab it up and save it and all that stuff. I have bought, like this one right here, I actually bought online through Joann's, a pack of 25 when it was on sale. Um, and all that works. Yes, you can use not mat board, but like the backing board in the art department or framing department at Hobby Lobby or Michaels mm -hmm. or so. The only trouble I struggle with that is it comes in such big sheets. Pieces of it. How do you, how do you, how do you even start to cut that? I don't off? know if some they can see the thickness of that. Right. And what I was going to tell you is on this, if you have cereal boxes or cracker boxes, mm -hmm. you can glue two or three layers together and come right. up with thick chip board. Right. I just like to start out. I'm lazy, lazy. To just start I like out with to the, start out with, <laughs> with, it, the, yeah. right, with the chipboard. Yeah, with the chipboard. Okay, so you've got your bags and your chipboard. Again, right. cut your chipboard just a little bit wider all the way around than your bags. Than your bags. Okay. Mm -hmm. The next thing you need, my favorite part, is the paper. Yes. Okay, so I spent the morning, woke up crack of dawn, or no, I woke up and picked out my paper this morning, and I have it pre-cut. And, of course, uh, what I wanted to show you, I bought this Tim Holtz... Um, if y'all have seen my other books, I love Tim Holtz grungy papers and things like that. This is going to be the front of the book, you know. And I needed some more blues and green books. So I've already cut the front of the book, the back of the book, and then my two inside pieces. So you'll need some paper. Mm -hmm. Here's another one, uh, the Tim Holtz grungies. So this took me just a hot minute to uh, get ready this morning, cut and get ready. 
Now, Kathy comes over here, and how long did it take you to pick up paper? Oh, less than a sneeze. Less than a sneeze. <laughs> this is my paper. I'm doing gourds for fall. So outside, inside. Um, and my paper is not cut because I do mine a little bit differently than what Molly does. So mm -hmm. we'll show that uh, during our presentation here as to how I make mine a little bit more primitive looking. Molly's is a little bit more finished off. Um, just depends what you like. But either way is... Easy, mm -hmm. easy peasy. And when she's saying finish looking, I wrap my paper around the edges so there's right. no raw chipboard on the edge. Kathy does hers just to the edge, does a beautiful job of sanding and distressing yes. with inks and things, so it's a beautiful look. Okay, the other thing you need is you're going to need tape or glue. And Kathy, you know the other day we talked all about tape, you know, trial one, two, and three of this. I'm going to try to glue today. Oh, are because you? Because more people you will probably have, more glue, to the have, glue? have access. But the tape that we're using is, uh, it comes on a roll. I have bunches of it. This particular brand is Couture Creations, and it's a little over four inches wide, so it makes the books perfectly. Double-sided tape. Right. Very easy Double -sided to use. Double-sided tape. And then you'll need some other pieces of tape, you know. For embellishments. To catch your and, edges and for embellishments. And if you're folding and your edges over, right. <clears throat> when it comes to glue... Any old white glue will do and all. Just don't put it on too thick. You might want to use a little foam brush or something. Kind of go edge to edge so that your paper doesn't warp and wiggle yeah, and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't uh, absorb it. Do you water your glue down at all, Molly? I don't. I, don't? Have, okay. I have some time in the past. The more water I add, the more I find it bubbles, bubbles and up a little stuff. Bit more. So okay. I'm not a big fan. So having said that, when you're gluing, you would need to have something to squeegee it. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it'll be squeegeeing too a little bit. Okay, on the subject of squeegees, what, this is not a squeegee, it's a brayer. But um, when we're, <clears throat> after we put our paper down, whether it's tape or um, glue, glue, which we're going to try, uh, we use a brayer to make sure we get real good adhesion of the paper to right. the chipboard and all. Doesn't hurt to have a pair of scissors on hand. And then this particular tool is a crocodile from We Are Memory Keepers. Mm -hmm. And I have the old version. It has the pink handle. Nowadays, they've gone to, I think, aqua color, teal colored mm -hmm. handles and all. What you want to look for, they have a hole punch that they carry at, you know, Michael's or Hobby Lobby or something. That does not cut. Do you, this space right here, if you can see that little hole, will allow you to put a really thick piece of chipboard or multiple, multiple layers of paper and stuff in. Right. That's what you're looking for. The hole punch has this little swivel thing that you turn around and it punches holes, but it only punches holes. Right. Unfortunately, it does not allow for the thickness of the chipboard mm -hmm. to be hole punched. It's a great tool because you have, a, I think, either five or six choices of holes, sizes to punch. Mm -hmm. It's just not for the thickness of the chipboard. And this, when it comes to our bags, we actually will clip our bags together. You'll see in a minute. And we can clip all 25 bags at once. Right. You know, punch our holes, right. you know, one time uh, on that. Okay, the other thing you'll need, we're getting close to the end, uh, is book rings. I use yep. two inch. <clears throat> I think these are two inch size. I have a hole punch here because when you use this tool and you're cutting chipboard, there's a hole right there that the excess paper and chipboard sure. will fall out. However, I have to poke it every time because it gets stuck. You need stuck. to be able to see, yeah, okay. to get your visual. And this is my favorite tool, this little Fister's finger thing. Mm -hmm. um, fell in love with it when I met Molly. <laughs> um, in fact, I tried to find one today and, and could uh, not. So, uh, it's it an works. exacto knife. I know. Mm -hmm. But the, the trick is it fits on your finger. So when you're cutting, you can push and you have a lot of control or, or over just it. pull like you're or, drawing yeah, yeah. If you're drawing so mm -hmm. a great tool um I did not find one at uh, hobby lobby today but i'm gonna i'm gonna keep looking for another okay. so great tool for that for for my uh style of book so just as an aside <laughs> i had the you know i right to the left of me because i'm left handed i have a drawer with all my favorite tools in them well kathy comes over and you know she kept where's this where's this so i thought well i'm just gonna make her a drawer so i made her a drawer with tape glue all the basic necessities in this stays on her side <laughs> you know she's taking possession of that and this thing stays on her side that's, so that's i only get to tool. use them when she's not here but yeah, that's a phenomenal tool uh, it, it's good I, it is I really good. Do like oh it. and then did you cut your paper with this yes okay okay and then a paper cutter if you have of course. one a pair of scissors will work Makes but it really nice if you got a paper nice cutter. and straight okay yeah. so if, you don't need this Right now. I don't. Okay. okay. And then uh, I'm going to flick to the other camera now because we're actually going to get started. Uh, excuse me for looking away. I'm so sorry. This is the workspace we're going to be working yep. on. I'm going to ask Kathy. She's going to do her book kind of start yep. to finish because there's only one difference between the way she makes hers and I make mine. So right. 
Um, then we can. The other thing I'm pointing to is if you're using exact. Oh, we're out of focus. Hold on. Let me see if I can get us back in focus. There we go. There we go. Uh, if you're using an exacto knife, you better have a self healing mat. mat to cut to on. Put it on. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to start with mine. This is the roll of double face tape that Molly uh, was telling you about. What I'm going to do is I'm going to double face tape both sides of this. This is my front, and then I have a, a blank one for the back. So I'm going to get this as close as possible to the edge. A little tricky, a little playing around, but you can, can always trim. So that's a good thing. Got it pretty good right there. I'm going to put it down. Take my absolute favorite tool. And I'm going to do this. That's off of there. I'm gonna trim it here. And one more trim. And I'm gonna do the same thing <clears throat> to the other side. And yeah, it's a little cumbersome, but once you get the hang of it, like I said, you can trim anything off. You've got a little bit of room on both sides here so that you can play a little bit. That one's going to have to be trimmed a little bit better. <clears throat> and a little bit better here. And one more here. Now, Molly, do you want me to go ahead and do the other side of mine, or do you want to uh, You can make her? it from start to finish, okay. if you'd like. All right. So then, I have that one. I have to do the front and the back again. We just repeat that same process. So what'd you do today, Molly? Well, today, so I, was ready for, I was, uh, got ready for this. My dilemma yeah. was I started playing, when picking out my papers. See, you know, get yourself in trouble doing yeah, that. Yeah, I started pulling oh. things. Oh, i got to make a scrapbook page out of that. Oh, i got to make some uh, 4th of July decorations out of that. Oh, I've got to do, you know, so I had just a blast going through my stash. Going through your stash? Yeah. And how's your stitching, Molly? <gasps> well, I'm so glad you asked. I'm, yeah. I'm, I would say 80% done with the... Um, Last little thing I'm working on, that little blackbird, I think it's a blackbird design. Okay, uh, okay. Thing, uh, and it is that uneven weave linen. Oh, how that is that looking, me. Molly? Well, I'll show you later. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, this I, is it, Molly's uh, first linen piece that she's working on. So. Yes, it, and it's not an even weave, it's an uneven weave. Yes. I mean, it's an uneven weave. I did hear Carol of Saltbox Stitchers last night. Yeah? I think it was her. I think it was her. Even talking about it, she got off count on something. Oh, what did she do? And she spent. She said she couldn't even go to bed. She was so busy <gasps> trying to find her mistake. Isn't it was just that... you know it takes over. You got to find your mistake. It does. And yeah. she finally said that it was. Uh, she found one thread was like a big slub of thread, and the next yeah. thread too it was real. So thin. same kind of a situation. And all I could think of was aha. You know, yeah, <laughs> that is. It happens. I feel your pain, lady. Did she rip? Did the frog visit? I don't or? remember if she, she ripped or if she made it work. Okay, she made but uh, it, work. it was she was off, and that's what had happened to me. I was off by just that two friend. complete stitches because I had taken three in one stitch and three in another, or something, you know, because I couldn't see the little thread. Uh, and I, uh, Kathy, I have to tell you, I'm struggling oops. with breaking through some of those thicker threads that are. Uh, oh yeah, it's like they've molded to the thread next to it or something. So. Uh, now, if y'all see me reaching, and I'm going ahead and I'm getting yeah, started Molly's on working mine. on hers. I'm just actually cleaning up my edges. I find that the more clean you come into gluing your paper on, the little, little bit easier it is. Oops. Got one more here I want to take off. Um, a lot of people have been commenting on our videos. Some wonderful comments. Oh. We have. Absolutely uh, wonderful. <clears throat> and I, I want to apologize. I tell you, I felt like I owed everybody an apology. I have watched a bunch I can't even, I couldn't even imagine how many hours I've spent watching YouTube videos of uh, cross-stitch uh, YouTube floss tubers that are so gifted. And I watch on a big screen TV, whether it's while I'm in bed or in the living room or in my craft room, but I never comment because I'm on a TV. Oh, you know? that's true. That's or I never hit true. like or I never hit mm -hmm. subscribe. And you know, when you go back into YouTube, well, it brings you right back where you were kind of thing as far as suggesting videos. Right, right, right. So I never even have to subscribe almost I feel like because they you're, just come to me 
I spent some time yesterday going. I'm trying to go back through and resubscribe. I mean, so resubscribe, resubscribe to or not resubscribe. That you found that you love. Subscribe to everybody that I love, and then and that's bunches of them. And then leave a comment or two yeah. because I know how much it means it to does. us. Uh, um, so I thought I better do that. I'm at the point now. I'm going to be putting paper on my front and my back. Uh, I have my tool here. I'm going to pick at that corner. This is still sticky down here. This just peels right off here. And because I'm making this for fall, I'm going to do gourds. One of the things you do want to be cautious of is if you do have a one-way pattern, um, stripes or, or uh, like I said, a one-way that you need to be careful of so that you get it the way exactly the way you want it. So I have that glued down or pasted down, taped down. I'm going to cut this out just like I cut out the just like I cut out the tape using that that chipboard to kind of guide me and you might have to do one oh I'm so sorry one or two paths to get it where it'll pull away decent and I think I moved it our board well, I, might, so. I, was, I, I cannot get to the drawer that the blades are in but I probably need to change a blade at some point and I'm going to use polka dots on the inside so I'm going to peel this other side off and I think I said this before if you can't get one of the corners you got three others to uh, <laughs> to grab so you take 500 yep. I think we said that yeah uh, yeah I think uh have to just there we go just got to get that right touch to peel that off and then again careful if you have a one one way or even a border on the bottom possibly uh of the paper I know every once in a while Molly laughs at me because I <laughs> oh I have done that and what she's talking about, those of you who buy scrapbook and paper, yeah. they have the little strip at the bottom that tells you what brand it is, has the little SKU oh, that they need to yeah. scan. Well, Kathy will turn her thing backwards, lay it yeah. down on paper, and then turn it over, and she's she's caught that little uh, strip. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm, now she's trying to remember, cut that off cut first. Cut that off first, yes. <laughs> so you don't make a boo-boo. But, uh, but I have to tell you, when she's made those mistakes, she does an excellent job of coming Making back them with better. some... better. Yeah, coming back with some trim or ribbon or something. Yeah, and, uh, can it, always fix it. As they say, it wasn't a mistake, it was a chance for embellishments, you know. And I think, honestly, too, that's what these are all about, is just making making it fun and cute, making them as cute as what you'd like. And, and using up scraps. Using up your scraps. Mm -hmm. So we've got one cover done. We're going to do the next one. <clears throat> Doesn't matter which way. I'm going to pull this off. Same setup. We're just repeating. Uh, grab that. <clears throat> Try to sticky it on here. And again, if you go a little above or beyond outside of the actual chipboard itself, you just trim it away. And it works out perfect. That done. That done. This is probably my most favorite paper project so far. Is Ooh. making these. Uh, you know, the other day we were doing something and right in the middle of Kathy goes, Oh, I have an idea. Yeah. Well, I just had an idea. The light bulb went on. I was watching someone's video last night. Do you remember who? Actually, it was this morning. Okay. I got up so early, it felt did like last night. Did your nights run into morning? No, I did. I got up so, so early this morning. Uh, anyway, the people that were doing it were showing a flat fold technique they had used to finish off their cross stitching. Yeah. And they mentioned that it was, for, and I was in one room of the house uh, watching TV. I hate to tell you, we've got a TV in every room. But anyway, um, and they mentioned a woman named Vanna Pfeiffer. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. What is her channel name? Oh, the Twisted... Twisted, Twisted Stitcher? Stitcher, I think Twisted is what Stitcher. she is. Yes. Okay. So, wonderful oh my finisher. God. Mm -hmm. I, I paused that YouTube because I didn't. I wasn't finished watching. I wanted to hear what they said. Came into my craft room because it was I needed to do some stuff in here. Turned on Vanna Pfeiffer. Vanna Pfeiffer. Mm -hmm. And she showed how to do it. And she, of course, was using paper. I mean, she was using fabric. And it was darling and easy. And I'm thinking, to heck with that fabric business. I Not that I don't have fabric. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to use paper to make do that same thing. And, and I, I'll light show you all. Went on. Yeah. 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 So all these little, uh, I showed a pic, one the other day where I'm using a frame and I'm turning the thing around. I could just make a little tent fold. Oh, yeah. Flat 
fold thing, and they store so easy. Yeah, they just fold right up. Mm -hmm. But another, I was thinking, aha, uh -huh, another way to use they paper. They just fold right up. You know, it was, uh, it was so whoever I was watching, which I still had that video on balls in the other room. Uh, thank y'all so much for mentioning Vana. Yeah, she does a, She has some excellent tutorials out there. <clears throat> I've made uh, my needle, my finished product, um, cross stitch roll, like a a roll that until you you know get your piece framed, that you just roll them all up in your beautiful roll and. Just her finishing techniques are very, very helpful. And we always try to remember to, to thank Vana because I uh, give her credit where credit's due. Um, don't you just love my gourds? They're darling. Oh, look. They almost match. Oh, <laughs> look at me. I did that intentionally. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did that. So my front and back is done. And I'm going to scoot over here a little bit so Molly can show you hers. Um, I'm going to start sanding on the edge here. This is what makes mine more primitive looking. But before I do that, I do want to make sure my paper is down nice and tight. I'm just going to give this a quick run here. Whoops, and I keep moving the, the board. Just to make sure I've got all the air bubbles out. And you can do a credit card. I think Molly likes to do a credit card every now and again, although we do better at the store with the credit yeah. cards. Mm. Ah. Okay. So I'm okay. going to do that, and I, then what I'm going to do while Molly sneaks in here is I'm going to sand my edges. And I sand them down pretty good. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, I'll get that white. You'll see mm -hmm. it. Go ahead and do that because that'll, that'll make, yeah, okay. that'll make okay. while okay. I'm talking. While well, you're talking. Yes. All right. So No, I'm saying you do that. Okay. I'm not going to talk while you're sanding. Oh, all right. Because mm -hmm. it's kind of noisy. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of noisy. But now, don't tell my husband the way to get me to quit talking when you're sanding. <laughs> oh, wait. Maybe he'd make me something. So I am almost done with my sampler. In fact, today I went to Hobby Lobby and I got the, the uh, mat board and the glass. And you know, there's a, you know, always conversation about glass to glass or not to glass, eye glass. Because down here, if you sneeze, you move around a half an inch of dust in the desert. So I do put glass on mine. Um, but I did that, that's what I did today after my other appointments. So. A fun-filled day already. Looking forward to this, though. So you found a frame that was the no, perfect No, for side. my old one. My old oh, antique one that I showed you yeah, on our last last tube. But they had a frame. I just oh. went and got the glass cut. Oh. Okay. Glass cut. Okay. They, you do that. They'll cut your glass and give you foam core, or not give you, but cut your foam core. And... No, no. Kathy, they've had we've had several several people ask about framing. Yes, I saw that too. So I think I told, I promised them. I, you know, I can't speak for Kathy, but I promised them that you would teach us how to do yeah. framing. Yeah, and I will. We'll absolutely do that. One of the things, if you're interested in taking a look at it and see if you're even remotely interested in framing, Total Framing had a video on pinning because that's what I do to mine, I pin. Okay. So if you want to get out there and watch their video, in fact, she was stretching, I think, something today. Um, so yes, uh, framing is, I think, a great technique to, to know. Um, I'm just gonna take this a little bit, get this little edge off of here a little tighter. Um, and someone asked too about pins. I use the stainless steel uh, flat tie pin. And the pin is, uh, I like the little bit longer length. I have used sequins pins for framing, mm -hmm. but I find that they don't stain the foam core as nice. So I do do use the three quarter inch stainless steel pin with the flathead. Are they? I I used to call those sequin pins. Yeah, the you, little ones are. Do you remember when a yeah. hundred years ago you made a sequence ornament? Sequin oh ornaments. My God. With my aunt Mamie. I yeah. don't know how you ever remember. My mother in law and I would go to Lee Ward's on Friday night while the boys went bowling, and. That's what we did. Okay. We well, why, Kathy, if you don't I'm, mind, what I yeah. think I'm going to do is, if you're yeah, going to ask good. me to do mine next, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to cut here, and then I'm going to come back and do mine. Hold okay. All moment. right. Okay. Now, Molly here. I'm going to show you how I make my book just a little bit different than Kathy's. And what the difference is, is my edges are covered, and I don't do all the sanding. Did I mention I was lazy? But anyway, so I don't do all the sanding. I just like that feel in my hand and all. So what I've done, I use glue instead of tape. So I literally just took my piece of chipboard and put some wet glue on there. I happen to use the uh, Michaels mixed media glue, which I love. And I used a very professional tool, my finger, and I uh, 
you know, just smeared the glue around. Wipe it on a little, you know, wet wipe or something. So this is what you end up with. Then I take a pair of scissors, which I had near me, and I just, and you can see where, we're not giving you measurements because it depends on what bags you buy and all, but you can see here my chipboard's cut just big enough for my bags, and then I just cut my paper about a half inch bigger all the way around than my chipboard. So those are the measurements. And then I just cut off the corners like that, you know, just cut off the corners. And then I fold them in. I'm using a table as my scoreboard kind of thing. Do that, get them ready. And then I just put some glue here, use my finger, did that. So I ended up with this. And this is where I'm going to show you all this. It's not the biggest thing in the world. Well, I don't know if, even know if you can see it now. But when I had first put the glue on this board, kind of bowed up from the wet, but I've, I've been kind of doing this to get it back flat. But by the time you add a little bit of glue on this back side, it'll flatten out. But so the glue works just as well. I would just ask you not to put big streams of glue without spreading it out, or you will see that ripple in there. So now that I've got this side covered, all I do instead of uh, you know using a double-sided tape, I cut a piece that is just a fourth an inch smaller than my chipboard all the way around. Ooh, I didn't use a good print for y'all. So that you can see I have that, this piece is a fourth an inch smaller on both sides than this piece of chipboard. So when this is folded over about a half inch, when I tape this on there, it will be a little eighth inch border showing around. So it gives me a nice clean edge. Now, I could have used glue, but I'm going to use a half-inch double-sided tape. Glue would work, but I just love my tape. This tape I buy is from Express It. X-P-R-E-S-S. Okay, hold on just a minute. Um, so it's from Express It. Hold on just one second. Kathy, does it say stop instead of start right it there? It says stop. Okay, don't hit that. Oh, okay, good. so we're recording. We're good. Okay. okay, I got worried. Woof. You know, I put Kathy in charge of the controls <laughs> uh -oh. there, so she thought the plane was going Pilot down here for a second. Hold on. Anyway, so yes, ma'am, we're recording. Um, anyway, uh, so <laughs> I love you, Molly. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Love you too. Uh, anyways, <sighs> it's from Express it. X P R E S S It I T. And it is the best value I have found on double-sided tape for the quality it is and the length of the rolls and all. So that's how easy mine is. Glue, slap your paper down on, you know, put the glue on the chipboard, put your chipboard down on your paper, press it good, leaving about a half inch all the way around, cut your corners, and then I just, I kind of do this so I get a nice sharp turn on my paper. Then I add glue, hold these down. The difference between glue and tape is I gotta kinda sit there and hold my glue down until mm -hmm. it sticks good. Whereas with tape, it's just kinda instant. Then you take your smaller sheet of paper. It's a fourth of an inch narrower than the chipboard. I put double-sided tape on it. Once these are down, then I would just put that on top. So that's as easy as that is. So now what I wanna do next is I have already marked, I think, you don't need to worry about making a template for your first book. You just decide how far apart you want your holes um, and, you know, cut, poke your holes. But because I want to be able to interchange my bags between my books, I'm using a book I already made, took the cover off it, laid it on here, marked my holes with a pencil so that now every... Every bag I cut arm. is going to fit yeah. in any book I want to use. And kind I, of thing. I'm just going to interject here really quick. If you use the floss away bags, they already have one hole. So you have to compensate for your second hole. There you go. Yeah. But how, you know, yay that they only have one. Yeah. So now I'm going to try. Mm -hmm. I can't do this with. Let me see if I can. I got to. Oh, hold on. Just got to use my very expensive here pokey tool. That's a great tool. It's actually out of the beading department. They're bead reamers. They come in a little set or something for not a lot of money. Well, I still didn't get it out. Hold on. Still got one in there? Yes. Yeah, there you go. It's gone now. <laughs> uh, so, anyway, you see how good that little, that this thing cuts through a lot of stuff. Okay. And then it's my cups. cuts it like butter. Like butter. Okay. Now, so I have my holes, theoretically, in my two pieces of chipboard. Isn't that pretty paper? That's Tim mm -hmm. Holtz paper. So pretty. Um, anyway. Where's my bags, Kathy? Oh, so then what I did was I counted out 20... I start off with about 25 bags. 
Some of my books I have 30 bags in, some I have 24, it just depends. But this is 25 bags, stacked up, straightened up. I put alligator clips on each side, and then take my little template, the cover that I just cut, lay it on top, use a Sharpie, mark my little holes. The reason I use a Sharpie is because you're writing on plastic. And then the same exact thing, all 25 bags at once can slip in there and punch the holes which I've already done kind of thing. So that's as easy as it is to make those bags. I mean, the books. Now, we're going to go back to Kathy because I have a craft room that I, you know, I love my stuff. I could just play with it for hours and all that stuff, and it's fun rediscovering. Kathy comes over, picks out paper in less time than it took to sneeze, I think she said, and then I want you to see the embellishments she found in my room that I did not even know I had. That are darling. They're, they're, they're like perfect. So anyway, she's like, okay, back to Kathy. Okay, it's Kathy back. Um, you can see that I have punched my holes doing the same uh, technique as Molly. The only thing I was more uh, needing to care about was the fact that the Floss Away bag already has a hole that it comes with. So I had to compensate for that hole when I punch my second hole. So if you're using floss away bags, something to keep in mind for that. Um, so really at this point, it's kind of come down to our embellishing, uh, what we're gonna put on them. And I did find from Molly's absolute stash, these cute, cute, cute gourd stickers that I'm gonna use. And I have a adorable scarecrow face, which I don't know what happened to my scarecrow face. Where He's over there. I can almost guarantee you. So I'm going to play with my scarecrow face wherever he traveled to. Here's your scissors. Thank you. Yep. He's got to be there. Yep. I say that like I mean it. I know. He is. I probably put it back in the bag. So I will hunt out my scarecrow little face. He's just an absolute little cute little guy. I think he's adorable. Um, and I'll probably put him on here. But uh, like I said, I have punched my holes already and in my bag, so I'll be able to put those in here. I'll clip them together with the uh, binder rings, and we're good to go. A little scarecrow man flew the book. Let me see if he stuck to my book by he any might chance. Have. He might have. Oh, I see him. Oh, you do? Look. Oh, there he is. There he is. Look at that. How cute. He's, I'm just going to tuck him here. I'm going to give them a nice bow and put some bags in, and I'll have a, an adorable looking little floss bag for the fall. Oh, isn't that darling? Cute, cute, okay, cute. now, so, did you want, you don't have, okay. Yeah, I, my floss bags fell apart while I was looking for Mr. Sc I just crawl. Can I show them one more so, thing, Kathy? Yes, of course. You want to squeeze in here? I am, I do, but I think I can do it from, from here. From there? Okay. I um, like doing digital things and stuff on the computer. As I mentioned, so one of the things I did this morning while I was uh, up and at them, I don't know what the heck got into me, I made myself some little custom-made, um, what do you call these things, Kathy? Whoop, wrong camera. What do you call those things? Uh, oh, charms, our little charms. Like uh, thread our drops thread or drops thread and, charms or something. Mm -hmm. And what this one says, I used some little artwork that I had. Oh, I wish it would focus. Hold on. Can I get it to focus? Oh, it's struggling. To, there it goes. Uh, make today count. You remember I had told you Kathy had bought one from Tim Holtz collection that said make today count. So I just took some artwork I had, typed that on there, and then made the colors, you know, use what I thought looked in the, you might not be able to see it there, but the background is actually a piece of linen, a print, you know, a piece, uh, digital artwork of a linen and some stitching, and it says make today count. So I made that charm. And then for these papers, for the cover of this book, I actually made a charm that, let's see if it's going to focus. It's got a little floral wreath around. It's got a pretty little bird in there, which I don't know if you can see. I'll put some pictures on Instagram. So I made that one match that. So instead of using the Darlin right. 3D graphics that, I mean, the uh, embellishments that Kathy uses, I usually just keep my paper uh, planer mm -hmm. because I slip them in those holders. And then I use a charm. You know, I'll, I'll put some beads on the ring, on the scissors mm -hmm. or something like that mm -hmm. on there and all. So I had fun making those charms. And Molly's probably she's right with with packing them in her her box. You don't tend to squish 
the right. embellishments on the front, whereas I have mine more displayed right. in my little antique Good. sewing basket. Mm -hmm. I do use them. I'll have, like I was just using this one on the sampler that I was working on at home. I uh, took the floss out of it because I wanted to show the bags for an example today. But And I'm not predicting the future, but in my mind, we're going to go to a somewhere stitching at some point in our life or something and with the less embellishment something i'll be able to throw yeah, that in my bag can, you know put my little yeah. thing in there and throw it in there i don't right. know but anyway well kathy but that was fun. fun it was fun pretty I, easy huh i think we accomplished what we set out to do so hopefully. and i using paper Yay, paper that's a win and scraps and scraps to and i am not it, i was dumbfounded just i would say you know dumbstruck but I, I kept talking but uh when kathy came over found that paper she just opened my closet which is you know top to bottom paper and oh, I'm I'm done. Just, i'll just use this i'm like Hi. it took me hours uh and then i have a drawer that you know I have embellishments everywhere but in one drawer i have like baggies of uh fall left over from different things i've you know kits i've made or crops whatever she just grabbed the first bag she comes to oh look it's fall and pulls out those things and match. And the I boards had are board adorable. And the I had, little scarecrow. I'm gonna I, I had no idea I had board stickers. But anyway, uh, is that as easy enough or what? It's easy. Okay. It's easy, and I think we like what we end up with, and they're practical. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, hopefully everyone. If you have questions, of course, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. We're we're trying to get to all the comments. There's been many. Oh, um, wonderful! Thank you for it's just them. yep. Can't thank Make you or yeah. So I think we're good. Okay. All right. Thank y'all so much for joining us. And uh, we do have some more tutorials that we're hoping to do. Yeah. Let us know. Uh, some of y'all are sweet enough. Don't be mean now. Yeah. But some of y'all are being sweet, sweet, and offering some great suggestions oh, of what we gosh. need to do to improve. Yeah. Love them. Yep. Love them. We're, we'll Very keep helpful. trying. My next goal is to get this dang monitor that's over here. Right. You know. I have a little small TV. Yes, I have an extra TV. Anyway, that I'm thinking I can mount to the wall right there and just mirror the. I'll figure like it out. Construction. Yeah, I'll figure it Reconstruct. out. Reconstruct. Okay. We're Thank y'all so Thank much. Thank you. Can't have wait a to see you again. Kathy, it was fun. It was fun. Bye.